Test, test. Can you hear me? <laughs> uh, thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, I'm Jeff Mendoza, and today I'm going to talk to you about that. You can read that. <laughs> um, so first of all, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm an engineer on Google's open source security team, and I work on securing Google's GitHub repositories. Um, also, I'm a contributor to the Open Source Software Foundation. That's that cool-looking goose with a shield. Um, and I work on, uh, I'm a chair, co-chair of a working group uh, with Amir here. And um, also, I contribute to the All-Star Project, which I'm here to talk about. Um, and of course, uh, if you see me you know, after this talk, uh, feel free to approach me, ask questions if you want to learn more. OK, welcome OSPOites. I think that's the term. Uh, you all in OSPO, adjacent OSPO, or work on OSPO-like things, uh, welcome here. I really appreciate all the work that, that you all do. Um, I know OSPO works a lot on compliance, you know, licensing legal requirements. That tends to be one of the first things. Um, or releasing your, your organization's IP, making sure that you don't release your secret sauce, uh, developing pr processes and procedures there. And then potentially on open source ingestion, um, you know, if you have a process that you want to like make sure that you, this is relevant or good when you bring that in. So um, welcome and, and thank you for all the hard work. Um, but you know, here I talk a little bit about what we do in OSPO, but um, not why. And you know, the real reason why is because we all love open source. And we believe, you know, rightfully so, that developing software in the open is the best way to produce the best software. Um, and then we go to our organizations and advocate for those benefits to the other people in, in our companies or in our, our groups. Um, and thank you for that. And um, also, when doing that, um, we also sometimes have authority or administer our organization's uh, open source presence in the community, typically that might be our GitHub presence or wherever else we publish our code, and um, write guidelines and policies for how to, how to um, present and how, what rules we might need to have that presence. Um, so again, we love open source. We, we advocate for it. We want to convince people that haven't been convinced yet. Hopefully those are getting fewer. Um, but what's a nightmare scenario for that mission that we have in our organizations, um, a security incident related to open source. So if, if you know, the, big, the big execs see that like, this is dangerous, maybe they're going to put a damper on and say, yeah, you shouldn't be releasing as much open source as you're doing or contributing or, or whatever we do. Um, so for those of you not like, super plugged into the security community, this is a very like, basic diagram of what could happen to your organization. Um, you produce a really cool open source project internally, or project internally that you think would benefit from open source development and, and getting contributors outside your org. You open source it. Uh, a malicious actor puts in a backdoor, whether into the project directly or somewhere in your release pipeline. And then that project that's maybe used by your paying customers or your consumers is then um, ingested, and those people are, are compromised due to your open source project. Um, so an example, in March of last year, uh, the PHP language's Git hosting servers were compromised, and attackers added a backdoor to PHP uh, that enabled remote code execution. Fortunately, the commits were detected and reverted before it made it downstream to users in that case. Um, what I'm describing here, as many of you may know, is a supply chain attack. And a really basic example, a basic definition of a supply chain attack is a malicious compromise in a project um, that is then used to compromise downstream systems. Uh, and, and in here, and for, for us Ospoites, we're talking about our open source projects mostly. Uh, of course, this is a buzzy thing right now, and you probably have heard a lot about it. There's a co-located conference track happening right now. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's the buzz right now. Um, but in the past, open source has been safe from these supply chain attacks. Uh, typically, open source security in the past was um, somebody made an accidental bug that needs to be, um, you know, that's found to be a, a introduce a vulnerability that needs to be fixed, and that fix needs to be uh, 
pushed to downstream. But that's not the case any, any longer. Um, attackers are attacking open source deliberately to put, introduce, introduce bugs, introduce vulnerabilities. Uh, and that's on the rise. Uh, as you can see, the up and to the right chart here. Um, so yeah. And then this other chart, uh, you may have seen this yesterday morning. But um, these attacks are happening, and they're, they're targeting open source. Um, the recent CodeCov attack shows how supply can be, uh, be exploited. So CodeCov is something that happened. Uh, it was an attack not of the actual repository, but of the way the, the CI system that's attached to the repository, and then, and then the um, result, resulting bits were uh, compromised. OK. So jumping back to a little bit about me, um, I'm here giving you a talk about security, but I'm not a security researcher. I don't do, you know, I don't dig through code to find vulnerabilities. I don't do offensive security. I don't do um, penetration testing. Um, but what I do like to do is look for the easy gains. And while I won't say that we, need, we don't need any more people doing those things I, set, I mentioned, um, they're far outpacing the rest of the, the, rest of the industry. So the, 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 the bleeding edge of like security is not being adopted fast enough. And there's a huge amount of, of practices and posture and uh, recommendations that aren't being used. So, I, so, so for me, as, as not a researcher, I want to say, let's use those things that other, peop other smart people have already found and figure out how we can apply that to what we're doing in a way that makes it um, automatic and easy. Um, and another kind of fact to state here is that uh, GitHub is a, the place where most people, most organizations put their open source software um, to get a lot of eyes on it, to get contributors that already know how to open PRs, and to get, um, you know, to get more, more awareness. Um, so we're, we're putting all of our open source on GitHub. GitHub has security features built in that may not be um, fully used. Uh, or they may not be able to be used uh, at scale, at the kind of scale that big organizations have, um, the, the kind of scale that OSPOs manage. And so if we kind of put all those things together, um, we get to All Star, which is what I want to talk about today. So I, I saw that we needed to, to make this security automatic. I saw that we do a lot of open source on GitHub. I saw that we needed, to, you know, security is, is serious. We want to avoid any kind of incidents. Um, so what, what I created was this GitHub app, a tool that um, administrators and of any open source repositories or organizations on GitHub can use um, to improve the security posture of those organizations. Uh, and All Star is a project under the Open Source Security Foundation. So. We have a cool goose with a star. <laughs> all right. Um, so just at a real high level, I'm going to dig in deeper into what all what it does at each point. But it's uh, you know intended to be used by the GitHub administrator to maintain adherence to the security best practices across a lot of GitHub repositories. It's it's running in the background. It's not something you have to set up to run and continuously checking for if you know once you achieve like some kind of security compliance that you don't have regressions. Uh, and then when it, when it does find that, it raises an alert. Uh, that could be a GitHub issue or other, some other kind of configured action. Um, and in some cases, it can actually go and just fix the setting for you in GitHub. Um, and if you're familiar with GitHub apps, uh, it's pretty easy. You go to the page and you click the big green button. Um, so this is an instance that's operated by me uh, under the OpenSSF. Um, you can run your own instance, and I'll cover that later in the talk. Um, so it's an open source project. You can either use the code or just, just click the green button. All right, so I've talked a bit about this gap in um, security posture be between what we know and what, what, we know, what we should do and what we're doing. Um, but what are those things? You know, what are the best practices? Um, 
So in general, they kind of come in either something you should do or something you shouldn't do. Uh, so just a real generic list of continued testing, to making sure your, your dependencies are up to date, making sure you have good um, review practices, and then things you don't do, like making sure you, that you don't have um, CI permissions that let you know, your, your tokens that are too broad, um, the principle of least privilege, that kind of thing. So, so goal of All Star is to codify these practices into individual security policies, something that as uh, the, the administrator that's kind of setting a rule, you would say, all of our, all of our repos should meet this policy, and if they don't, it's um, out of compliance. Um, and then as, a, as the administrator of AllStar, the, the app or the, the GitHub repositories, you decide which policies to enable uh, or disable and what specific settings you want to have on those. Um, so this is a um, graph, a, a diagram from Salsa that covers the entire like uh, world of supply chain attacks. Um, you know, it simplifies this a lot, but kind of covers the different points. And um, I wanted to cover it, like which ones All Stars looking at. Um, it's mostly A and B here. So, can the developer, you know, is is there any attack on getting um, unauthorized changes into your source control, or is there a compromise to the the permissions on your source control? It does help with CDNF a bit um, because. Some of those things, like your CI system setup, are um, files that are in your GitHub repository or in, that, that AllStar can look at and then tell you if you're doing the wrong thing there. Um, but inherently, it's not uh, a plugged into your CI CD system unless we, we can look at those files in your repository. Um, so if you're concerned about the rest of the letters on this, and you should be, um, check out the Salsa project and, and read more about uh, how to make sure all of those things are secure. All right, so I'm going to dive into the policies that AllStar supports specifically. Um, and if, you know, this can get a little dry because it's detailed, but um, if, you take, if you take anything away, know that these are the practices you should be doing whether or not you use AllStar <laughs> on your GitHub repositories. Um, so the first and the major uh, thing that we want to have turned on is branch protection. So branch protection is a set of GitHub settings that limit the users with write and push accesses ability to push directly to those protected branches. Um, at its most basic, it requires a pull request to merge code, so you can't actually just push directly to the branch. Um, but if you put the settings right, you can set the number of PR reviews required, dismissing approvals, et cetera. Um, and if you have good branch protection settings, the goal is that the, you can protect from an attack with the stolen credentials of a single maintainer that has write or, or push access to that repository, or that maintainer going rogue. <laughs> um, so remember, remember that a single administrator, if they are compromised, they could still have access, because administrators can go and change any setting. So still follow you know, the principle of least privilege there. Try to limit the number of administrators on your GitHub repositories. And then um, with good branch protection, you can have um, more writers and, and not be worried of uh, one of them being compromised. And you know, like most security, if, you're, if your project has um, better security than the project next to you, then the attacker will go to the project next to you. So if they have to, to compromise two different writers to get access to make an attack, um, then you know it's a lot that much harder. So yeah, we recommend setting up branch protection on any GitHub repository that you have where it's feasible. Um, it's not feasible on single developer projects where you don't have anybody to approve reviews. So, um, so what can AllStar do for branch protection? It can, you can tell it um, which branch to, protect, to, to check. Normally, it'll just check the default branch. But if you have release branches, you want it to check those too. Um, it'll see that you have the specific settings set that are needed, and then notify the repo or if it's out of compliance by the, with the issue. Or um, it, AllStar can go and change the settings to be what you specify. Actually, 
raise the settings up. Um, and again, like you might be thinking, why do I need All Star to do that? But remember the, the scale here. Branch protection is a per repo, per branch setting, and All Star does that across all your repositories. Uh, the next policy I wanted to discuss that All Star enforces is binary artifacts. Um, you can say I don't want to have binary artifacts in any of my Git repositories. Um, binary artifacts are things that can't be reviewed. Um, you can, you know, somebody could try to merge a new version, a, a quote new version of this binary in that might be subverted and you wouldn't know. Um, so in general, this is something you want to avoid unless you absolutely need it. Um, so again, All Star can go and check to see if you have anything there. Um, you can list out ignore list out binaries that are allowed that you um, in an ignore list, and then it'll alert you if it finds any artifacts. Um, another policy is a security MD. Um, so security MD is is known as a security policy. Sorry for the naming confusion, but. Um, this file lets security researchers know how to responsibly and privately disclose vulnerabilities found in your project. So without it, a researcher might be forced to disclose a vulnerability publicly, leaving you with no time to actually produce a patch version for your consumers. Um, so All Star can check for the presence of this file in uh, each GitHub repository or at the org level. So at the org level in your .github, um, in your .github repository, you can put a security MD there, and it'll imply, uh, apply to your whole GitHub organization. Um, this is found in the security tab, if you're, if you're not aware, uh, where it's got the orange there. If you click on that, and then the security policy on the left, you can see the security policy for any GitHub repository. It's there for, and security researchers know, how to, know where to find this, but you, as an organization, might want to make sure that you have this on everything. Uh, another policy that All Star can enforce is an outside collaborator policy. Uh, in GitHub, uh, organization members and teams built inside of an organization can be given access to repositories like read, write, uh, admin. Um, but also, if you go directly to a repository, non-organization members can be added, and GitHub calls these outside collaborators. Um, so Git, All Star can scan repositories with, for any outside collaborators with certain access, uh, which you configure. You can say, I don't want to have any outside collaborators with write access, or you can say just admin, like I want to avoid admin, but outside collaborators with write is okay. Um, and it'll, All Star will alert you if you have any of those. Um, this pairs well with other automation that controls like who's a member of the organization, because that's just the, the top level that you, that you might have. So I've, I've known a number of um, companies that have that kind of automation. So when somebody leaves the company, they, they remove them from the, uh, from the GitHub organization. Um, and just another side note, there's another part of the outside collaborator policy called ownerless, which will um, alert you if there are no administrators. <laughs> So this might be a worry if um, nobody, nobody in your, comp your organization owns the project um, and nobody's looking for alerts or issues or, or vulnerabilities. Um, another policy that All Star can check for is dangerous workflow. Um, so to, to, to understand this, we have to look at how like a CI CD system typically works. And people use CI CD for two things. Um, here we have a left, left column and a right column, and these things have vastly different trust levels. So on the same system, let's take the right column. You have a contributor, an unknown contributor, making a PR. You want to take that code and run test lint and coverage on it and produce results. But on the left column, you also have like a, a maintainer making a release tag. And in that system, you want to build uh, release artifacts and sign them and publish them to your, your storage uh, account or, or your package manager. Um, so one is highly sensitive and one you're running untrusted code and it's really easy to get the configuration of your CI CD wrong to like leak, have leakage between the two. Um, so All Star has some built-in detection for GitHub Actions workflows. 
Um, this is specific to GitHub Actions because, again, we're looking at those workflow files that are checked into the repository. Um, and it, I won't get into all the dangerous patterns here that like, you, might, it might, you might do, but essentially we have a bunch of regexes and, and look for different tags and settings to let you know if um, you're doing something that's probably causing that to happen, this, this, uh, this vulnerability to happen. Um, again, if, this is, if your CI-CD is compromised, you know, attackers can get access to push code directly to your repository. They often have write access to the repository or to push to your releases where you have your package managers and release artifacts. So something to worry about. Um, the other thing All-Star can do is more checks from the sister project. We have security scorecards. Uh, I'm going to talk about scorecards later in the talk, but um, scorecards implements checks that All-Star can check for as well. Uh, and then ideas. So please, you know, you all, you all have, you all do GitHub. <laughs> you all, you know, think about security or, or policy or management. Um, tell me what we think we should add to All-Star to be able to check for at scale. Um, so All-Star has access to the GitHub APIs and the repository contents. That's what we look for to decide if something's good or bad. Uh, and you know, let us let us know your your thoughts. Um, we, one, of the, one of the ideas is the contents check, you know, like if you want to have a required git pre-submit for everything that does something, you know, does something like credential scanning, I don't know. I'll start to check for the presence of that pre-submit. Same thing for like GitHub action, if you wanted to have a GitHub action that you want or GitHub action that you want to, you don't want. <laughs> um, something like that could be a policy. Um, another one we're thinking of is like, we want to make sure you have your dependency auto update bot present, like depend a bot, renovate bot, something like that. But um, please see the issues and, and drop your ideas. I'd, I'd appreciate seeing them. OK, so that's a pretty detailed look at um, all of the, all of the um, uh, security policies that we can look for. Well, what do we do when we find a repository that's out of, out of compliance to based on what, what you set up? Uh, and those are our, our, quote, enforcement actions. Um, so the most basic one is to create a GitHub issue. Uh, and the important thing to know about the GitHub issue is that the people reading the issue aren't necessarily the person setting, you know, the person setting up all-star, setting up the configuration, deciding what the requirements are. They're, they're, they're maintainers of the, some, one of the projects in your organization. So they need to know what the violation is exactly, why it's important whether the remediation steps to fix it and you know, links to more documentation. So that's kind of our goal with the issue. Um, All-Star will open one issue per policy per repo, uh, and it will ping it if, like every 24 hours if nobody responds or, or fixes it. Um, whenever the, the, the um, violation is fixed, since All-Star is scanning in the background, it'll see that it's fixed and just auto-close the issue for you. The, you don't have to close it. Um, next one is to fix. So let's fix, if, if the policy is something that can be fixed um, by All-Star, then let's have a, a, an action that will just do the fix for you. Um, so right now it's just branch protection because those are the settings. But any, any policy that we add that is a setting that can be flipped or switched, um, let's have an action that will go and, and All-Star can make the API call to GitHub to, to set that. Um, some of the other things like, like security MD, you know, that's not easy to fix. Like we'd have to make a PR, but we don't really know what you want to put in there. So that's something that you have to go and, and do yourself. Um, so future ideas for actions. Again, it's a, it's a developing project uh, looking for, for contributions. Uh, right now, I'm working on RPC action, which will make a gRPC call to an external system, which is meant to be then piped for, by you into like your internal system if you have an internal bug tracker or something like that, if you wanted to build a plugin. Um, block is an idea of an action where, you know, if we were really confident in All-Star's detection and what we want to check for and what we want to uh, enforce, and um, we could say basically if you're out of compliance, like stop allowing PRs to, to be merged or something like that. That would kind of be the most draconian <laughs> as, a, as a policy administrator. Uh, that you could set. So that would be easy to implement it, but we haven't really seen a need to do that yet. Um, email, 
Like we could have it like issue where instead of creating issues, it can email somebody, the administrators, the maintainers of the project. Um, but not tr it needs design, like how do we, how do we know who to email and, and whatever. But um, if that's something that, that people think All-Star should do, definitely um, weigh in. OK, so let's say you have All-Star set up. It's uh, checking all your repositories for the things that you consider important, uh, creating issues or whatever. Um, policy is not going to be universally applicable to every project in your organization. Um, so you'll need a way to allow users to opt out. So All-Star config either goes into an organization level repository, the .allstar repository, or it goes into a, the repos itself. You can put config in each individual repo. Uh, and there's another setting that the administrator can have, the override enabled. And that really allows you, as the administrator, to decide um, what level of review you want on uh, exemptions. So uh, if you set override allowed, then any repository might be able to put, you know, the, the owner of that repository can put a, set, a file in that repo to say, like, I want to turn off or, or tweak the settings to all star. Uh, and that might be if, if you want to have, um, if you trust everybody to, to follow like whatever approve, uh, policy that you have for exempting. However, if you want to have like an approval process, you could say override disabled, and um, any change to all-star config would need to go to the one dot all-star repository in your organization, which you would manage and look at PRs and you know have some kind of way that you determine if this it's okay to exempt this repository. Uh, again, this is flexible at the security at the at the policy level, so it's not just for all of All Star. You can say for this policy, um, repos can opt themselves out, and for that policy, I want it to be I want all reviews to go through me. Okay, so getting more into the more details on the install, uh, I already showed you the big green button. You click it. Um, we have a sample repository that's a quick start with all the config files. If you copy the quick start to your organization, then um, you will essentially just turn on All Star with all the policies uh, and overall, it, in all the default settings. And overall, it's um, the project's intention that the default settings and all the policies is the security, is our recommended security best practice. Um, but of course, everything, everything is tweakable. Um, but before you do this on like a huge organization, you, you might get too many issues right away. So you might need to take a little bit more um, uh, stepped approach. So, um, so for a large organization, you, you'll want to have steps. And I, I kind of recommend two prongs. One, look for teams in your organization that are interested in All Star and trying it out and seeing if they will turn it on themselves. And, and two, um, Start looking at the policies and seeing which one might be the easiest one to enable uh, company-wide or organization-wide, and um, doing that like one step at a time. So like branch protection is a hard one because I think it's probably the most important one, but it's um, maybe the least used right now, uh, at least widely. So turning it on will probably make a lot of issues. <laughs> um, but something at like setting up an org level security.md file and turning on that policy could be a really easy first step. So um, yeah, launch and iterate, and if you run into any problems, definitely let us know. Uh, so um, at case study, uh, I'm doing this at Google right now. Um, we have done that two-prong approach. Uh, for example, the like Flutter, Dart, Angular teams have turned it on full all the policies on their organizations. Um, and at the company-wide level, I'm only, I've only turned on binary artifacts. So binary artifacts will check, again, the artifacts and, and create the issues. So we've had like surveys and internal communication for people that have seen these issues, because um, you, you, know, you can go to GitHub, search for issues, and then see if we've get any, um, get any feedback, tweak the issue text, that kind of stuff. And of course, all that's going into the, the um, the, the public all-star, so all of our efforts on making the issue text as good as we can. Okay, so I mentioned about running an instance. Um, so the, the one on the left, OpenFSSF instance, that's the one that I run 
I use OpenSSF infrastructure. Um, so when you install a GitHub app, you're essentially like giving um, the app, which is a pro like a private key and you can access GitHub APIs, you're giving it access to your GitHub repositories. Um, so the, the OpenSSF one is volunteer run. Um, I'd recommend using it as uh, for public foundations or if you use GitHub primarily for public projects. Um, but also requires a good amount of permissions to accomplish all the things that it can do. Um, so if you have, you know, if you have a lot of private repos or you deploy your mission critical infrastructure from GitHub, uh, you know, you'd probably want to look into running your own instance. Uh, we have documentation, the one link there, the operator MD. Um, it's very simple. It's just a go binary. You run it with a few command line options and um, that's it. Uh, getting towards the end of the talk, uh, so I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sister project that I mentioned before, Security Scorecards. Um, so scorecards and All-Star share a lot of code behind the scenes because they both check for security best practices. The difference is Scorecard is something you run on other projects and it tells you a one in 10 score of the security posture of that project. Um, as OSPOites, you might want to consider using Scorecards in your organization's OSS ingestion process. Um, and then we hope that like demand for high scores and open source will give like improve the posture of other open source as well. Um, before you run scorecards on your ingestion or you know the, your dependencies, you do need to know what they are. So I think there's other talks about that <laughs> in this track. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. You know, let us uh, uh, hit the issues and let us know what you think, ideas for policies, feature requests, what best practices are we missing? <laughs> Questions? Uh, up here? Yeah, you can run scorecards. Yeah, you can run scorecards against your own repository. The question was, what should we do with scorecards? Can we run it on our own repositories? Yes. So that would be, you know, point in time, like I want to see how am I doing. Uh, I, would I would recommend that. And then when you're at the point where like, okay, I want to, I want to keep, keep everything up to date, then, then look at All-Star. Uh, question back here. Um, so we're a bit odd. We don't use GitHub. We use GitLab. Yes. Um, so can we use All-Star on GitLab? Uh, on our self-hosted GitLab? Yeah, great question. Um, so All-Star is a GitHub app that's based on like the settings that GitHub provides and kind of even the gaps that it doesn't let you set settings at an org level. Um, so I think a as a project, the mission and vision supporting the same thing for GitLab makes sense to me and I would totally be interested in getting that, getting that up off the ground. But um, it, would, it would be, you know, we have to, have to look at like what, you know, some of the things that are based on contents, that makes sense, like binary artifacts, security MD, but things like, um, you know, the, the branch protection settings, like where, where does GitLab have those settings and ha what, is, what is hard to do at an org level, right? Um, because if you, can, if you can flip a switch and do everything for all your repos, you don't need all-star. But if you need to go to a thousand repos and, and switches, <laughs> flip a thousand switches then, and make sure they're all on all the time, then we need all star. So the, I think the question is like, what, what do we want to do there as well? Practice what? Practice yeah. <laughs> uh, question, I'm back. Uh, I might've missed this, but when you said you were talking about adding new policies later on, yeah. uh, what does the updating process look like for that? As an organization owner, do I need to uh, the combination of updating the app and then also updating my configuration for that, or is yeah. there a way for me to subscribe to the best practices uh, without having to update? Great question. Um, so the app, you're always using the latest app because it's basically just plugged into the one that I'm running, essentially. Unless you're running your own instance and you need to download right. code or get a new release. Uh, each policy is in a separate um, file, so you just need to create the new file and put the config there to, to say turn it on. and with the default configuration, it would essentially be an almost an empty file. Um, as far as announcements, I have an announce list where I would announce, like, if you're not following the repo, I'll announce, you know, um, monthly that we have these new features that came out, you might want to check them out. Okay, 
would there ever be a way to uh, subscribe to the recommended best practices without having to do anything uh, and automatically get the new updates? Yeah, so I did just merge a feature that lets you point to another repo for config. Um, so I plan to use that across multiple orgs that I control. Um, so the quick start right now is to copy a template. Um, we could have, which we don't have yet, is basically like the golden, golden config, uh, and then you could, have, you could point to that. So um, the features there, the documentation, and the golden config is not there yet, but I want to add that. OK, cool. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, more questions? Nope. All right. Um, well, that's about it. We're five minutes early for our coffee break, so get out there and get coffee before everybody else does. <laughs> Thank you.